<laughs> As promised, let's talk a little bit about how modeling works in Blender. The workspace itself can already tell us a lot on what modeling entails. As you can see, the object is in edit mode, which is very important for modeling since it relies on manipulating the vertices, edges, and faces of a mesh. You'll also notice that the modeling workspace opens the quick tools menu on the left for us already. While in edit mode, the left hand side quick tools menu provides several more tools for us to use including extrude region, bevel, knife, and loop cut to name a few important ones. We'll go into more detail about some of these tools in their own videos. The modeling workspace also automatically brings us to the modifiers tab of our properties editor. Modifiers are very useful during modeling and we'll be going over a few of those in their own videos as well. Additionally, there are several more options up here at the top of the viewport now that we're in edit mode. Each of these menus will give you additional operators to work with during modeling. That being said, most basic functions will be available through the quick tools menu alone. Just to demonstrate real quick, let's say we want to model a chair. You can do that very easily in the modeling workspace by simply selecting the appropriate tools. I'll be going over exactly how I made this chair as we learn more about the modeling tools. Modeling revolves around the editing of meshes. But what are meshes? A mesh is a collection of vertices, edges, and faces that describe the shape of a 3D object. But then you ask, what are vertices, edges, and faces? Vertices is the plural form of vertex, which represents a single point. Edges are the line segments between vertices. And faces are flat surfaces enclosed by edges. But some software will also call these polygons. You've probably heard the term polygons or polys when people refer to 3D models. If a model is made of polygons, it is a mesh. These are the building blocks of all meshes and modeling involves the manipulation of these building blocks to create a 3D mesh. So how do we create meshes? Well, we already have our cube here, which is a mesh, but let's try to add another mesh. If we go into the add menu we had used before to add objects, you'll notice that it looks a little bit different. Because we're in edit mode, Blender only allows us to add mesh shapes. These are the same options that belong to the mesh category in the object add menu. Let's go ahead and add a UV sphere. Right now, it's a bit hidden within our cube, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit G to move it outside. As you can see, this UV sphere is made of vertices, edges, and faces, and so it is a mesh. It should be noted, however, that adding meshes in this way will add the mesh shape to the original cube object's mesh data. If you toggle back to object mode, you'll notice that both the sphere and the cube are considered as a single object, if you want to add a separate sphere object, you're going to want to use the object add menu instead. You can do this by going into object mode in the top left, then go to the add menu, go to mesh, and select UV sphere from there. We will go into the differences between object and edit mode in a separate video. Now that you're able to create meshes, it's time to learn how to start editing them. Object mode is the default mode of Blender and is helpful for manipulating objects as a whole. Objects can be moved around and animated throughout the scene. However, what this object looks like is determined by its mesh data. And mesh data can be edited through edit mode. Edit mode is the default mode of the modeling workspace, but you can also access it by simply changing this drop down menu here in the top left hand corner. For hotkey users, you can press tab to toggle between edit and object mode. While in edit mode, you will be able to manipulate vertices, edges, and faces to change the shape of your mesh. Once finished, you'll be able to toggle back into object mode to move the object as a whole once again. It's helpful to know that your edit mode history and the action of toggling into edit mode all count as a step in your undo history. Therefore, after you finish an edit and go back into object mode, Undoing your steps will correctly bring you back into edit mode with all of your edit mode history intact as well. For example, I'm just going to change this cube into a random shape by selecting one or multiple vertices and using the transformation tools to move, rotate, or scale the vertices around. Then we'll toggle back into object mode with tab. Just to top things off, let's rotate our cube to add an action in object mode as well. Now let's say I changed my mind about something and want to go back in my undo history. 
Simply hit Ctrl Z to undo, and you'll see that our edit mode undo history is still intact and accessible. Fun fact, cameras, lights, light probes, empties, images, speakers, and force fields all do not have an edit mode. But there are non-mesh objects such as armatures, curves, and lattices that do have an edit mode accessible, but may look a little different. For these objects, you won't be manipulating mesh data, but rather the object-related data that they might have. However, the principles of editing these objects remains the same. Manipulate the building blocks to create what you need. Blender can also edit multiple mesh objects at once. To do this, simply select all the objects you would like to edit and go into edit mode. You'll notice that you'll be able to manipulate vertices, edges, and faces of any of the objects you have selected simultaneously. However, you won't be able to have any of the objects mesh data interact with each other, as trying to connect vertices between objects will not work. For example, normally you can press F as in fill to join two vertices with an edge, but because these two vertices belong to separate objects, Blender restricts me from connecting them. In order to actually connect these vertices, I would have to join these two objects into one mesh. To do this, simply select them in object mode, go to the object menu, and select join. For hotkey users, you can simply press Ctrl J. Once you've done this, you can now edit them in edit mode with no restrictions. In case you want to separate your mesh again into different objects, you can go into edit mode, select a part of your mesh, go to the mesh menu, and select separate. Here you have a few options, but selection is the one you want. This will separate your selected geometry into a new object with its own mesh data. Let's talk about how to manipulate the vertices, edges, and faces of our mesh while in edit mode. By default, we can already select a vertex with left click and move it around with the move tool. We can also select multiple vertices with shift left click. This allows us to rotate and scale our vertices with their respective tools as well. You'll notice that when you select a bunch of vertices, there are edges and faces that exist between these vertices that you selected that will also get highlighted. For example, if you select two vertices, the edge between them will be considered selected. And if you select all four corners of our cube, you'll see that the face within these vertices is also considered selected. You can technically manipulate faces and edges simply by selecting the vertices that form them, but you can also change your selection mode. In the top left-hand corner of the viewport, you will see three icons that represent what selection mode you're in. By default, we're already in vertex select but you can also change it to edge select or face select mode. These will allow you to select the edges or faces directly. For a more intuitive experience, you may enjoy holding shift and left clicking these icons to activate more than one selection mode at a time. For example, if we were to turn on every one of these modes at once, you could click anywhere on the mesh to select either a face, an edge, or a vertex at any time. Box select, circle select, shift select, and most basic selection tools are available in edit mode as well. For hotkey users, simply use the 1, 2, and 3 keys on your number row to change your mesh selection mode. You can also hold shift and then press 1, 2, or 3 to activate multiple selection modes. Another very important tool while in edit mode is loop selection. Depending on your mesh selection mode, you can select a loop of edges or faces by holding alt and left clicking. In vertex and edge select mode, you will select edges when alt clicking, and in face select mode, you will select faces. Quick tip, in vertex and edge select mode, the edge loop that gets selected is the one that runs along the edge you alt click. However, when in face select mode, the face loop that gets selected runs perpendicular to the edge you alt left click. The Extrude tool is one of the fundamental tools for modeling. But what is the Extrude tool? Well, allow me to simply show you. If you select a face and click the Extrude tool in the Quick Tools menu, you'll see this yellow gizmo. This is a normal axis manipulator. But what does that mean? Well, it certainly doesn't look normal, and that's because normals are a type of vector related to faces. Simply put, the normal is the vector that sticks out perpendicular to the surface of a face. If we go ahead and left click drag this manipulator, you'll notice that it duplicates the face and moves it along the normal axis. But it also creates new edges and faces between the original face you had selected and the new duplicate face to maintain a connection. This is extruding. 
You can also left click drag anywhere else in the viewport instead to move the extrusion along your viewing plane. You can do this for all types of selections, including multiple faces, vertices, and edges. However, if you select multiple faces that point in different directions, you'll notice that your manipulator is pointing at sort of an average value of where all your selected faces are facing. Keep this in mind as we'll come back to it later. It's important to note that if you right click while dragging the manipulator, you can cancel the extrude, but it will not remove the duplicate faces. This is intentional as it allows you to create new geometry at the same location as the originally selected geometry. This can be very helpful when wanting to scale or rotate your extruded mesh. For example, what if we wanted to create a stack of connected cubes? You could simply extrude, right click cancel, and press S to scale your extrusion down. This will then let you extrude again and confirm to create the new smaller box. This was made super easy by the fact that the extrusion cancel brings the extruded geometry down back to the original cube surface. However, if you do this on accident and you want to remove the extrusion, just make sure you press Ctrl Z to undo it properly. For hotkey users, simply press E as an extrude to begin moving the extruded selection along its normal vector. Right click will do the same thing I mentioned before and left click will confirm your extrusion. But the extrude tool has a few more tricks up its sleeve. If you click and drag the extrude tool icon in the quick tools menu, it will open up a sub menu with more extrude options. The first option is our default option, so we'll skip that. But our next option is called extrude along normals. This is what you might prefer to use if you select multiple faces that point in different directions. This will allow you to sort of push the geometry outwards along each individual face's normals, but still keep the faces connected to each other after extrusion. This is great for adding a layer of thickness to your mesh, for example. The next extrude subtool is the extrude individual tool. This is extremely helpful for making certain faces extend out independently from its neighbors. For example, you could use this to create spikes or stylized bumps on a surface. Quick tip, this tool works best when faces are selected, not floating vertices or edges. The final extrude tool is very powerful and easy to use. It's called the extrude to cursor tool and allows you to extrude your selection and extend it to the location of wherever you left click in the viewport. This will still be along your viewing plane, but allows you to work very roughly and quickly when you need to. For hotkey users, if you're in edit mode, you can actually access the extrude to cursor tool at any time by simply holding control and right clicking. Now that we've learned about the extrude tool, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make that chair I made earlier. This is what we want to make, and here's how we do it with the extrude tool. Simply select your cube, go into edit mode, and scale the cube down along the z-axis. We will then use the loop cut tool, which will be covered in its own video, to make some additional cuts on our cube. To use the loop cut tool, simply select it on the quick tools menu and left click drag to create a tic-tac-toe pattern like so. This will then allow us to use our extrude tool. Using face select mode, select the faces you would want to use to form the back of the chair as well as the legs of the chair. You can then go to the extrude tool and select the subtool extrude along normals. Then simply left click drag to bring out both the chair back and the chair legs at the same time. Ta-da! You've officially modeled something in Blender. Shut up and sit down.